Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski. This organic chemistry video covers alkyl halide naming. Section 7-2 deals with International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, or IUPAC, naming rules for alkyl halides. Alkyl halides follow the same rules as alkanes for naming, so it's just that halogens here are going to be named as substituents. So this video assumes a knowledge of alkane nomenclature, and if you don't know about alkane nomenclature, you should go back and look at that before you try to understand alkyl halide nomenclature. So the big addition here is that the halogens are named as groups. So for example, if the molecule contains a fluorine atom, it's called a fluoro group. If it contains a chlorine atom, it's called a chloro group. Bromine atoms on a molecule are called bromo groups, and then iodines on a molecule would be an iodo group. So here's an example of an alkyl halide and how to name it. So this molecule has one halogen attached to it, and so if you're going to name this as an alkane under the alkane rules, you first have to find the longest continuous carbon chain in the molecule. And there's a bunch of different options. And just like per alkanes, you should go through and just try to find a path through the molecule that gives you the longest carbon chain. So here's some things you might want to try. So there's here's carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, if you go that way. Uh, another option would be to maybe start from this end and go 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight is longer than seven, so that's a better longest carbon chain than the previous one that we looked at. But there's another way to get eight. If you go through the molecule like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's two ways to get eight. And just like with the alkane naming, the key here is that you want to find the longest carbon chain then if there's a tie that gives the most substituents. So that would be the one highlighted here in yellow because it gives three substituents. This molecule has a chloro group, it has a propyl group, and it has a methyl group. The next thing you need to do is number the longest carbon chain, and the way you do that is you start from the end of the chain that gives the lowest possible number to the first substituent. So here, in this molecule, it makes sense that that would be the number one position because the chlorine would get a number one then. Otherwise, if you were over here, the first substituent wouldn't be until the two position. So the appropriate way to number this molecule is to start at the carbon attached to chlorine and number accordingly. So we've got a one chloro group, a five propyl group, and a 7-methyl group. And then to name the molecule, you put those substituents out in front of the root name, which in this case, since there's eight carbons, it'd be an octane. So, uh, and you do it alphabetically. So, for example, with this one, it'd be 1-chloro-7-methyl-5-propyl-octane. This slide has a few more examples of alkyl halide naming. Here's an example of an alkane that has two bromines and a chlorine attached. The first task is to find the longest continuous carbon chain, and that represents the root name or the parent name. So here, that is the longest continuous carbon chain, and it contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbons, so its name as an alkane root name would be heptane. We need to number it, and again, you want to start from the side that is closest to the first substituent. So in that case, it'd be over here on the left. That'd be the one position, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So the appropriate numbering for this molecule would look like this. So here we have a molecule that's got two bromines in the two position, a chlorine in the five position, and an ethyl group in the five position. Naming these substituents then alphabetically and putting them out in the front would be 2,2-dibromo, 5-chloro-5-ethylheptane. Now one of the things that's important to note here is that the D, di prefix does not affect the alphabetization of the substituents in this case. So B for bromo comes before C for chloro, which comes before E for ethyl. So whenever you're putting di, tri, tetra, prefixes in front of groups to indicate multiple groups of that type, that prefix does not influence the alphabetization of that particular term. Here's another example that contains a ring. So similarly to other alkanes, you need to find the root group or the root name, and in this case the root is uh, the cyclohexane ring, so that would be the parent name or the root name. This molecule has then uh, a number of substituents attached, and we need to number the ring. And what you want to do with rings is to give the lowest possible number to 
the first group, which would be a one. But then you need to give, if you've got a tie here, so we could start either here at one or over here at one. If you run into a tie, then you need to find the path that gives the lowest possible number to the next group. And so in this case, it would be starting here because then both methyl groups get a one. So the appropriate numbering for this molecule would be like this, where this is the one position, two, three, and then the carbon with the bromine gets a four. So again, collecting those substituent names out in front of the root name, cyclohexane, then B for bromo comes before M for methyl. So the name of this molecule will be four bromo, one, one dimethyl cyclohexane. Another example here is this cyclohexane shown in this picture. So here again, the root name is cyclohexane. And here we've got a tie for where to start the numbering. So you start either at this spot and either give that a one or start over here and give that a one. So when there's a tie and the numbers of substituents would be the same either way, then you use the alphabetical name of the substituent to break the tie. So here F for fluoro comes before I for iodo. So this is going to be the number one position and the appropriate way to number this ring would be like this. And then we'll put the names of the substituents out in front. So F for fluoro comes before I for iodo. So it'll be a one fluoro for iodo cyclohexane. But one other thing that we can do here, since we have a wedged bond shown here and a wedged bond shown here, we know that this is a, a molecule that has some stereochemistry. The name for this particular arrangement is cis. So when you have two groups on a cyclohexane ring and they're pointing in the same direction like this, it's cis. So we put a six cis prefix out in front. So the name of this molecule is cis, one fluoro for iodo cyclohexane. If the groups were pointing in opposite directions, one having a dash bond and one having a wedge, for example, then it would be a trans molecule. That's all covered in alkane nomenclature. If you need to review that, go back and do so. In addition to systematic IUPAC names, alkyl halides are sometimes referred to by common names. These are names that don't necessarily confer structural information. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but there isn't a clear defined pattern to it all the time. There are a few alkyl halides that you need to remember or actually recognize because they're just so common. So alkyl halides are sometimes named according to non-IUPAC or common names. One example here is this molecule. So the IUPAC name for this one would be dichloromethane and certainly you'll see that referred to this molecule referred to as dichloromethane pretty often but the other name for this is methylene chloride. So that's another very common name that you'll see quite frequently. Here's a molecule that has three chlorines on it. Under IUPAC naming rules, this would be trichloromethane, but most of the time people refer to this one as chloroform. Here's another example of a carbon with four chlorines. So this would uh, be tetrachloromethane in the IUPAC naming rules, but it has the common name of carbon tetrachloride, which is almost used exclusively. And as another example, here's an alkane that has a chlorine on it. So in this case, in this example, the group that the chlorine is attached to is a tert butyl group. So one of the ways that alkyl halides sometimes get named is to call this just tert butyl chloride because it's got a tert butyl group on it. So tert butyl chloride. And you'll see that other kinds of groups are named similarly. So if you had, um, for example, an isobutyl group with a chlorine on it would be isobutyl chloride. So that's another type of naming system.